Welcome back everyone. Today I want to do a biography on Usher Raymond IV. With this resurgence, new album, new tour, and Super Bowl halftime show, the time is only right that we go through his journey. Full disclosure, majority of this video was made before his latest album and Super Bowl performance. Not going to keep you waiting any further, so without further ado, this is the story and triumph of Usher. So please... <laughs> Before we begin, if you want to see music bios or more good videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Also, I've started a Patreon account. On here you get more copyrighted material and they'll be uploaded 48 hours prior to YouTube. If you want to support or visit, link is in the description. And without further ado, on to our feature presentation. Usher Raymond IV was born on October 14, 1978, in Dallas, Texas, but was mostly raised in Chattanooga, Tennessee. At an early age, Usher found a deep love for music. He started singing at his mother's church. She noticed his talent, so she moved him to the big city of Atlanta, Georgia. He joined a local band called New Beginnings, but his stay in the group didn't last long, as his mother pulled him from the group due to a bad experience. Usher instead performed on talent shows. He was able to lock down appearance on Star Search, and after this, he got an audition with L.A. Reid and LaFace Records, where he'll sign on the dotted line. In 1993, Usher made his debut single, Call Me a Mac, as that appeared on the Poetic Justice soundtrack. It will be at this video shoot he'll meet his label mate, Chili from TLC. More on that in a bit. That same year, Usher started to work on his debut album, but he was going through a nature change in his voice, and LA became concerned and thought about dropping him from the label. Reed decided to ship Usher to New York to hang out with Sean Puffy Combs, the man who's all in the video, all on the record, dancing. Woo! Usher said staying in New York, he got hooked into the lavish lifestyle Puff was living. After his stay in New York, Usher released his self-titled album. Songs included Can You Get With It, produced by Devontae Swing from Jodeci. Think of You. In Many Ways. As for the album, Critics called out his sexual lyrics as he was only 15 years old at the time. The album peaked at number 167 on the Billboard 200. Once again, LaFace was in limbo with Usher, so his mother did something drastic. First, she quit her job as a medical technician to become her son's full-time manager, and next she put her son on the road and they tore up mostly out of her pockets. But throughout this, LA was noticing Usher's growth and his fan base started to grow. After seeing this, Adding on to his improved stage presence, L.A. decided to give Usher one more chance after he finished high school. Once he finished high school, Usher released his second album, My Way. Throughout the album making process, he befriended Jermaine Dupri, who helped produce and write most of the album. Example was the lead single, You Make Me Wanna, and that became Usher's first chart topper on the R&B charts and the UK charts, but just missed the top spot on the Hot 100 going number two. How you make me wanna But his next single would get there, and that single was called Nice and Slow. I just wanna take it nice and slow. The title track will be his third single, where he interpolates Wanna Be a Baller by Lil Troy, and that went to number two on the Hot 100. My Way became Usher's first successful album going seven times platinum. To promote, he went on tour with Puff Daddy on his No Way Out tour. He also toured with Mary J. Blige and Janet Jackson on her Velvet Rope tour. In 1999, he released a live album. That same year, he started to get involved in Hollywood. He scored his first film role in 1998 with The Faculty. He also appeared in the movie She's All That and scored his first starring role on the film Light It Up. In 2000, Usher released the single Pop Your Collar to lead off his next album. The album was to be called All About You and released in 2001, but LaFace went under and was absorbed by Arista Records. Also, some of the songs on All About You were leaked on the internet. 
so he went back to the studio to revise the album. On August 7, 2001, he released 8701. The true leadoff single was You Remind Me and that went to number one on the Hot 100. But you remind me of a girl that I once knew. But for the video, he needed a female lead, so he asked his former label mate Chili from TLC to do it, which he accepted. And this started the Usher and Chili relationship. It should be noted that Chili was coming off a broken relationship with her producer Dallas Austin that produced a son. Other songs from that album included You Got It Bad, which also went to number one. And You Don't Have to Call, a Neptune's produced song. And that only peaked at number three on the Hot 100 as 8701 went quadruple platinum. During this era, he earned his first Grammy win for Best Male R&B Performance for You Remind Me. And the next year, he won again for You Don't Have to Call. As Usher started to work on his fourth album, cracks in he and Chili's relationship began to surface. Sources differ on how their relationship ended, but what it caused was a media circus. Suspicious rose even further when he released Confessions on March 2004, especially when the album sold 1.1 million his first week, the highest for a male R&B artist ever. Themes from this album included infidelity, breakups, and fans zeroed in on Usher and Chili's relationship. Many speculate that Usher cheated on Chili and had a baby by a woman he doesn't know. But Jermaine Dupri, who once again produced some of the songs on this album, said the album was about his past relationships, not Usher. Chili also backed up those claims, and she and Usher are on good terms today. As for Confessions, the leadoff single was Yeah, featuring Atlanta natives Lil Jon and Ludacris. The song became Usher's fourth number one hit, and fun fact, Yeah was one of the last songs recorded for Confessions. Yeah also became the number one song on the Billboard year-end charts for the year 2004. Other number one hits included Burn, Confessions Part 2, My Boo featuring Alicia Keys, And even though this only peaked at number 8, caught up. Confessions was a critical and commercial darling. Confessions became the highest selling album of 2004 going diamond. Ella Reid once said that this was one of the best albums since Thriller. At the 2005 Grammys, Usher won Best Contemporary R&B Album, Best Rap Song Collaboration for Yeah, and Best R&B Performance by a duo or group for My Boo. Billboard named Usher the Artist of the Year for 2004. Usher then embarked on the Truth World Tour, which grossed 29.1 million over 72 shows. In 2005, Usher starred in the film In The Mix. That same year, he became a partial owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers as part of a group. Next year, he starred in Broadway on the musical Chicago as Billy Flynn. While he only did two months, strep throat caused his ending, he helped boost Broadway in the financial department. Around this time, Usher started to date his stylist, Tamika Foster, to the dismay of fans and his mother. It was said that she and his mother didn't get along. In 2007, they got married and his mother was not in attendance. But Usher's estranged father was. Raymond III was not around for his son's life, but Raymond IV forgave him and the two reconciled. In November 2007, Usher and Foster gave birth to a son, Usher Raymond V. But Usher Raymond IV joy will be short-lived because in January 2008, Raymond III died of a heart attack. As he prepared for his fifth album, he briefly adopted a vegan diet. In 2008, Usher made his comeback album, Here I Stand. The leadoff single was Love in This Club featuring Young Jeezy, and this became his eighth number one hit. The song would later be remixed by Lil Wayne and Beyonce. Other songs included Moving Mountains, but it's like open mountains. Just like open the title track, and trading places. On the top, tonight I'm on the bottom, cause we traded. But compared to Confessions, the album undersold massively, only going platinum despite being critically successful. Many stated that he lost fans when he married Tamika Foster, as Usher's persona was more of a ladies man. Regardless, later that year, the couple welcomed another son, Naveed Raymond. But in June 2009, Usher filed for divorce with Foster, citing the marriage was irretrievably broken. Later that year, Usher emotionally performed at Michael Jackson Memorial singing his song, Gone Too Soon. Later that year, he recorded the song, Papers, which highlight the rumor riff with his mother, by the way, he fired her as a manager, 
and the ending of he and Foster's relationship, the song peaked at number one on the R&B charts. I'm ready to sign them papers. The song was intended for a standalone release, but he added it on his next album. Boom. Around the same time, he discovered a young teenager on YouTube named Justin Bieber, and Bieber became Usher's protege. In 2010, Usher released his sixth album, Raymond vs. Raymond. While many speculated that this album talked about the split, Usher claimed that the album was recorded before the divorce process. He released two singles, Hey Daddy with Plies. And Little Freak with Nicki Minaj. But the album will be known for the single OMG with Will I Am. Usher dove into the dance pop craze of the 2010s and was met with a minor controversy with The Simpsons. But OMG went to number one, Usher's ninth, and with this, he became the first artist to have a number one hit in the 90s. 2000s and 2010s. He released one more single, There Goes My Baby, as Raymond vs. Raymond went platinum. The album saw two Grammy wins as he took home Best Male R&B Performance for There Goes My Baby and Raymond vs. Raymond won Best Contemporary R&B Album. The summer of 2010, Usher released a follow-up EP called Versus. The song mainly featured was DJ Got Us Fallin' In Love Again featuring Pitbull and that peaked at number 4 on the Hot 100. Baby, In 2011, he made his first appearance at the Super Bowl halftime show as he appeared with the Black Eyed Peas performing OMG. In 2012, Usher released his seventh album, Looking For Myself. The lead single was Climax, a song produced by Diplo, and the song reached number 17 on the Hot 100, and it also reached number 2 on the R&B charts as Usher notched another Grammy win for Best R&B Performance. He will also release another single called Scream, and that gave Usher another top 10, peaking at number 9 on the Hot 100. Yeah, me know I'll take you. Now let's talk about Tamika Foster. Foster and Usher has been in an intense custody battle since their divorce. In 2012, she lost one of her sons, one that she had before Usher, in a water ski accident. The next year, Usher V was sent to the ICU after getting caught in a pool drain. He survived the incident, but afterwards, Foster filed for temporary custody over Usher's two sons, citing negligence and Usher Raymond's the fifth near-death experience. But a few days later, the case was dismissed, and Usher maintained custody over his sons. In 2013, Usher replaced CeeLo Green as judge on The Voice. He returned for season six, where his singer Josh Kaufman won. In 2014, he collabed with Chris Brown on the song New Flame. Speaking of New Flames, Usher marries Grace Miguel in 2015. In 2016, Usher released his eighth album, Hard to Love. The album featured the song No Limit, and that was a collaboration with Young Thug. Make you say, uh, uh, no limit. No limit. Got that, masterpiece. that same year, he collabed with Chris Brown again, this time on the song Party. He also received his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame that same year. But in 2017, Usher's legacy was jeopardized. A document leaked claiming the singer carried the STD known as herpes. The document stated that Usher paid her $1.1 million for medical bills and a civil suit settlement. Another woman came through with similar claims and sued Usher for $10 million and later doubled to $20 million after she tested positive for herpes and Usher failed to acknowledge her about the disease. Two more women and one male then came through with their own lawsuits despite one of the women testing negative for herpes. Long story short, Usher settled all the lawsuits by 2019 and that $20 million lawsuit was dismissed. Now this indirectly cost Usher his marriage. In 2018, he separated with his wife Grace Miguel and divorced the next year. In 2019, he teamed up with Summer Walker on the song Come Through, but it'll be 2022 when Usher comeback began. First, he started to headline his own residency in Las Vegas. In 2022, he had the My Way residency, and he had another in 2023. But in 2022, he had his own Tiny Desk concert. It was met with positive reviews and gave us this memeable moment. <laughs> that same year, he teamed up with the City Girls on the song Good Love. 
The next year, Usher released the song Good Good featuring 21 Savage and Summer Walker, and that song became Usher's first top 30 hit since 2014, peaking at number 25. He was also featured on the remix of Standing Next to You with Jung Cook of BTS. In October, on his 45th birthday, it was announced that Usher would be performing halftime at Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas, making his second appearance. But before his halftime performance, Usher released his ninth album, Coming Home. For three decades, Usher was and still is an important face in R&B. His versatility, performance etiquette, many imitate but never perfect Usher's craft. And that concludes the story and triumph of Usher. Tell me what y'all think in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.